Hey guys, it's Morty here back with another video and today we're here with the Google Photo app. Now Google's been doing a few things recently, moving away from their whole uh, Google Plus integration thing and the Photos app has been the first one to move away. So today we have this weird camera set up here, looking down on some phones that we'll be using to kind of demonstrate, so we'll jump over that camera to start having a look at what we've got here today. So jumping over here we have, well, both phones here running Android, uh, one's 4.4 KitKat and the other one's 5.0 Lollipop. It's the Asus Zenfone and the uh, Samsung Galaxy Alpha if you were interested. So we have two versions of the actual Photos app here. So on our Samsung Galaxy Alpha, I did not actually update it to make some comparisons between the two different apps, which we'll do a little bit later in the video. But as you can see, it's sort of the old Google Plus integrated one, which we'll again get to later. But the new Photos app that we have available now today is actually available not only Android, but iOS and the internet. So if you did want to use your web device, maybe you can go ahead and use that as well, as well as your iOS device. So you're not really limited anymore to having just on your Android phone. You can have all your photos everywhere and it's really, really handy. Now we'll go into the whole setup process. So we'll go ahead and select the account that we want. So basically we have here that you can go ahead and use Wi-Fi or cellular data. I'm just going to leave it on Wi-Fi as I don't have the biggest data plan to actually go ahead and use on backing up photos and those kind of things. And well, we get to this next screen where we have the option to either go with high quality uploads or original files. Now there are positives and negatives I guess to actually both of them. So high quality photos will limit you to a maximum of 16 megapixels. So if you have a camera on your phone that's larger than 16 megapixels, the images will be uh, compressed to fit that 16 megapixel format. But you also get unlimited video as well as photo storage. So it's kind of the upshot, you're getting unlimited from Google, but you're again limited down to the 16 megapixels. Now, if you do choose to go with the original option, basically it's going to let you upload any amount for any amount of time for any resolution, all those kind of things. So if you do have a phone with a larger megapixel count on the back, but you will be limited to your Google Drive space. So at the time of recording, you only get 15 gigs of storage as the free option from Google. So as you can see here, I have 107 gigabytes because I do have a larger plan with Google, but uh, yours will be either 15 gigs as kind of the standard or whatever you got as part of a contract. Now, I got the 100 gigabytes a along with the Zenfone 2, so it was kind of a cool thing there. But for me, I'm just going to run the high quality versions because for one, the camera isn't going to be shooting in anything higher than 16 megapixels. And honestly, I don't have much of a problem. It's free storage and I'm not having to pay for it. So I don't have a problem there. So we're going to go ahead and set it up. You can do things like pinch to zoom and all those kind of things. So basically we'll get through that in the whole video, but you can sort of just swipe through all of them and have a basic quick start guide. And it's a fairly simple app to get started. So as you can see, we kind of have some weird stuff that was there that's now disappearing to what I've actually taken in photos whether it be testing with the uh, Zenfone 2 and all that and you can kind of see the interface is sort of the same between the actual two devices. So on the older version we still have this kind of scrolling interface like we do now but instead of having the search up in the top uh, right hand corner it's now in a blue little bubble thing which again we'll get to later. Instead of having sort of little highlights and all those kind of things it's more integrated into one thing and the whole menu scrolling thing is actually pretty cool as opposed to an older kind of scrolling thing. Now We'll push that off to a side again and we'll focus more on this version of the application. So jumping in, the UI is very, very clean and well is super smooth and just goes along with the whole Android lollipop kind of thing where everything's smooth to work and just actually plain out works. And well, it takes a lot of the older version of photos and brings it into the newer one. So obviously you still have all your accounts here, whether it be photos, collages and the actual sync account up the top right there, which for me is my CPU modder account as I failed to say that name properly. And and overall, it's just a fairly clean and very simple app to get started with. Now, and actually using it, it does look like it's more optimized towards the actual Android phone space rather than the tablet and, well, any other space in particular. It's looking better on phones as the interface is a lot easier to use. Searching through things is also too a lot easier to use and overall just feels a lot more optimized on smaller screens with different options for sizes. So, for example, we have Comfort View, Compact View, as well as Month View or Google's terms for small, medium, large, and then what month and sort of things like that. So it's sort of just got fancy names essentially and everything's arranged in a chronological order which is actually really nice as I've seen photo apps out there who just arrange them by some weird way of actually arranging it. So it's good to see they're all in chronological order that have been taken and we'll jump into a few features that I actually found really interesting and really handy. First off being the actual search button. So basically if we go ahead and do a search for something, we'll say phones because I do uh, take a lot of photos of phones. So uh, uh, phones right there as I f 
we're able to actually type properly. The one problem with the Zenfone 2 is it does rock around quite a lot. So we'll go mobile phone maybe, and basically it'll do a search through all my history of photos and go ahead and find mobile phones. Now the interesting part of this is none of my photos are tagged, none of them have any other information, and it's pulling up photos of phones. So for example, we have the Lumia 800 right there, uh, ZTE Blade VEC up there, HTC One M9, S6, and all these other phones and stuff like that. Now, I have not tagged any of these photos, and some of them haven't even been uploaded to the internet, so th for what it's actually doing, it's doing a really good job. Now, I kind of had a thought about this, and basically what I figured is it's searching the internet for similar styles of photos, and going ahead and tagging your photos as what they are. So, for example, if we go down here, uh, I don't know, we'll find, where is it, my Nexus 5 photo, so that was when I was doing a video on actually uh, fixing the Nexus 5, basically what's that done has sort of taken that photo and then gone around the internet and seen matches of Nexus 5 teardown images and basically it's going to tag that photo as a phone. So it does actually a really good job and I found the same thing with faces as it, well I guess trawls through social networks and those kind of things to try and find names associated with those faces and I can say in actual testing it does a really really good job and it's kind of freaky in a way that Google servers are poking through your photos but I guess you did push the agree button there so the photos searching feature is actually something that I'm really really happy with and actually really like also too we get some other things like the assistant kind of thing that does give you some information on actually how to use the actual application all those kind of things and then we have collections which is basically photos and gifts and basically montages and stuff like that are being put together by your phone so basically you can go ahead and push the plus button you can make yourself a collection large story, all those kind of things, but if you use a burst mode on your phone, so say if the camera application actually supports a burst mode, you can use that burst mode to go ahead and actually make a GIF, so you don't actually have to go through any software, it does it automatically and sends you a notification of what has basically happened. So jumping back to the main screen, that's essentially what this app is, it kind of aims to replace any other photo apps and all those kind of good things. So jumping back to our main camera, that was basically the Google camera photos application like that, and I'm sure we'll see a lot more apps out there from Google themselves breaking off from the Google Plus chain. So jumping over to the web application, it's kind of the same, the interface is that same material design as what we had on the actual phone devices and still feels a little bit more optimised for the phone market, though it's good to see that everything is backed up and the simplicity of using this application is really, really great. I took a photo on my Zenfone 2 and then went ahead and picked it up on my uh, Samsung Galaxy Alpha with very seamless time and the upload was very quick and, well, because it's not a 16 plus megapixel camera, I have no problems in actually any compression or anything along those lines. So guys, on that note, like or dislike the video accordingly, let me know whether you'll be using the Photos app when you go ahead and take photos on your Android or iOS device, and I'll see you guys next time for another video. Don't forget to give us a sub if you like what we're doing and want to see more videos just like this one.